Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Across the Ocean, the camera show for underwater people. My name's James in Miami. And my name is Matthias, straight from Zurich. And we get together on a monthly basis to bring you this show that we call Across the Ocean, aimed at helping you get more satisfaction from the images that you're capturing underwater. If you've been following this series, you'll notice that there's been a progression, and we've been focused at the moment mainly on entry-level underwater videographers that are using action cameras. So we've gone through our settings, we've gone through hints and tips to help you get the best cinematic shots underwater, and now we're moving more towards the editing process. And what we really want to do with this video is show you how to use your footage, because it's one thing to capture underwater footage that looks cinematic and looks amazing, but if you don't put it out there and you don't share it with your friends and family, it can be very easy to get discouraged because you take clips, you dump them on your computer, you never look at them again, and that's kind of underwhelming and it kind of leads to people putting their cameras away and taking less video, and that's the exact opposite of what Matthias and I want to achieve. So, I threw my friend in Switzerland a little bit of a curveball. I found some, let's be honest, garbage footage I'm not going to comment on that. We'll see later. It was garbage footage. I have no shame in telling you at all that this was a dive I did with friends a number of years ago, uh, before I even had a YouTube channel, actually, uh, in the Cayman Islands, shot on a GoPro 7, maybe, 6, 5, I don't know, pick a number. And uh, I put the footage away. And it's exactly the kind of thing that we want to be talking about. So I, I sent Mateus uh a set of about 10 or 12 clips from this one particular dive uh and challenged him to put together a story sequence and then i did the same and the parameters were you can only use this footage in this bucket and the finished story should be one minute long how'd you get on buddy i think i did okay it was a bit of a challenge to be quite honest um the sequencing that we're gonna look at in today's video, that was actually quite okay, because I think that you got a very nice and diverse, um, just variety of different kinds of footage from all different angles and perspectives. So that made my job much, much easier to put a, um, a rather interesting sequence together in uh, 60 seconds, of the 60 seconds long sequence. But then what we're gonna look at in next month video the whole um color grading and so on the fine touches of the edit that was a little more challenging um but i would say this is also because the camera is rather old and i wouldn't put it to your blame that the footage um just uh, was a little difficult when he came to oh yeah color grading and, and, and no color red color filter grading. and you know no settings like i said this is old junky footage and i think that's that's kind of the thing so i put you through the ringer with it no doubt at all and i take full responsibility for it but at the same time it's an interesting kind of uh process now as with the action cameras Mateus, you favor the dji osmo and i have the gopro uh we actually both edit on different software as well i like premiere pro and you're using final cut right Correct, yes, I'm using Final Cut because I've been using Final Cut ever since. I transitioned from when I started first with video editing from iMovie, which was on my iMac uh, back then. And it was a very logical transition for me to then when I outgrew iMovie to move on to Final Cut. And ever since I've been using it and uh, we were just talking about this before. Um, in the end, they're both tools that serve a purpose and I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. They both do pretty much the same job and it's just important that you feel comfortable in whichever editing software that you use. If you're an Adobe guy, feel free to stick to the Premiere Pro. If you're a Apple or a Final Cut guy, that's also going to do the job. But there's other editing softwares out there that do the same job. It's just slightly different how you get to the result. But I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, you know, open up a discussion which one is better, Final Cut or Premiere Pro. They both do the same job um, as long as you know how to work them. So what we did was with this bucket of clips, 
I worked on a one minute segment. I can't wait to see Matthias's. And we did a screen recording of our workflow in our respective editing suites. So I'm gonna bring mine up now and just have a little talk through of basically how I bring all of these images through to life. Um, essentially what I do, as you can see here on uh, my Adobe Premiere screen, I have my project folder down in the bottom left hand corner and I've just dumped all my clips in there. Now what I like to do is if I know I've got a sequence that needs to be one minute long because I need it for a segment on a YouTube video or whatever, I take all my clips and dump them straight on my timeline. And you'll see how bad this footage is because you can see that it's in 30 frames per second and it's 1080p, it's not even 4K, which means I don't even have the power really to zoom in and get anything super detailed. But I just dump all the clips in and then I go through my usual workflow, which is scrolling through the clips and doing what I call my, my chop cut, my rough cut. So this is basically where I, I've got a clip that's a minute and a half long and I just want these three seconds, get rid of everything out. Now that clip eventually will get edited down to maybe one and a half, two seconds, but it's just a piece. Then once I've got all my pieces, I like to order them to tell the story. Now, logically you would think that would mean, well, just keep your files in chronological order and they will tell the story start to finish, right? It doesn't always work out that way. When you get back from a dive, you wanna try and mix your shots up to keep it interesting. So that might mean taking a piece that you shot later on of a close up being cut into pictures of divers swimming over the reef. Um, it's really all about that kind of mixing the shot up and getting your story to remain interesting rather than just following things in a chronological sequence. So I move the clips around and then once I've got them in the order I want, I bring all the clips together. Now you will notice that I adjusted the speed of play. Now yes, this was recorded in 30 frames per second. I can still slow that down. If I remove the speed down to 80%, chop 20% off, 30 frames per second becomes 24 frames per second, which is the frame rate at which most movies are shot these days. It gives the most natural uh, sense of movement and particularly underwater, the slower you can make your footage down to 24 frames per second, the smoother it's going to look. So once I've got all the clips uh, down to the frame rate that I want, uh, then I can put the clips together and go through with more of a fine edit and make sure that I'm taking exactly the pieces that I want. So I'm using my quick keys here. For me, it's Q and W in order to trim the front end off, what they call a ripple delete cut in Premiere Pro, uh, and just make sure that I'm getting exactly the segments I want. Now, because this was a one minute project, I set my in and out points to one minute so I knew how much I was over or about, and then I could go through and make small adjustments. And when it came to this point, you've got to be ruthless. So for example, there was one clip of an eagle ray, but I was too far away. The dive master had the eagle ray in his sights. I was a long way off. The footage is in 1080p. Trying to zoom in did nothing. So although it was probably the highlight of the dive, it's gone, the clip's out of there. I, I couldn't get it to look good, it's gone. Same with a shot of an eel where I just couldn't get my lighting right and I had my light in the wrong position. It's gone, it's out of there. Be ruthless with your editing and only put in clips that you absolutely believe fit into the story that you're trying to tell. In terms of the actual story itself, obviously I've got the entry and the descent at the start of the video. And then my final clip at the end is uh, a top down shot of the edge of the reef, the wall, if you like the top of the wall, panning off into the blue. So in between that, I've got our central character, who's my buddy, uh, Menno. Finding Menno, you've seen him in some of my videos for sure. And Matthias, I know you know him too. Uh, he's out there with his bright orange Dutch fins. Um, so I've interspersed him with clips of things that I'm seeing on the dive itself. And that's making up the body of the story of this guy out there doing a beautiful reef dive in Grand Cayman. So anyway, here's what I managed to come up with. Here's my one minute clip. I'm gonna share it with Matthias on our Zoom call here so that he can see it too. There's our hero. The orange fins. Of course. Nice.
Nice establishing shot. Some top down. Sensor scale with the wall, a lot of speed ramping. And then off into the blue. Right. That was the best I could right, do well with done. the absolute bucket of garbage I sent you. <laughs> well done, mate. There you go. Cool. <laughs> what do you got for me, Matthias? Let's talk through your editing workflow. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, James. I, I liked it. I think it uh, it's an absolute uh, uh, good sequence there. It makes complete sense the way you went from A to Z throughout the entire sequence. Now, I haven't really done much different, to be quite honest, um, when it comes to the sequencing. And if we look at, um, at the footage, the one thing that I've done differently is I've started underwater and not on land. Um, and um, well, I'll just show you the sequence now and then we can talk through a couple of the things that um, uh, how I've done it and why I've done it the way I've done it. So we start off with a shot here um, underneath. Then we have the diver getting into the water. We have the diver down pointing towards the swim through. We'll go through that swim through. We come out to the other side and then we've got the diver looking down onto the reef we've got a bit of a uh, b-roll shot of the reef itself with the fish the inhabitants that you can see the diver itself obviously i had to take in the eagle ray that you sent me you got the eagle ray nice yep so we've got a diver taking photos of this moray eel in the crevice there we'll swim over the top of the reef again We'll look down into that crevice or that swim through. We'll come across the eagle ray. Stingray. Oh, the nurse stingray, shark. sorry. Yeah. And the nurse shark at the end. And with this move to the right, we'll do a bit of a whip transition in the second video. And this is my closing shot as we see the divers, um, as I imagine, swimming back to the boat after the dive. Nice. Excellent, man. So a couple of things that I would like to add to this. Um, the way I normally work in Final Cut is very similarly to what you do. Um, I uh, put all the clips in the timeline, but before I put it in the timeline, Final Cut actually has something very useful. Um, you can skim through the footage before you put it in the timeline, and you can mark several spots in each of the clips as your favorite spot. Um, that's very easily done um, by just marking the section and then pressing F on your keyboard that's going to mark it as favorite. Then you've got a section where you can select all the favorite clips that you've assigned before and it's only going to show you those clips and then you can put them into your timeline. I always dump them in the timeline as well this time because I knew I had to stick to the 60 seconds, the one minute mark. I actually used a just a solid background that I put underneath my video clips and stretched that to 60 seconds so I had a bit of a sense of how long my edit was meant to be and then I started shifting around the different clips, trimming them, making sure that it makes sense story-wise what I want to tell um, that we uh, go through the entire dive and that the sequences actually but that they make sense going from one sequence to another one. I always disable all the audio on underwater footage because normally I don't need the original audio that is inside um, or integrated in the clip. So I just disable that, separate or separate it and then just delete it. Uh, and then I don't have the noise in the background when I'm editing um, the footage. Um, and that's basically it. So that's my rough cut all in the timeline and then starting to rearrange things and putting it in a way that you want. Most of the time I don't have a time frame where I say I don't want the uh, clip to be any longer than 60 seconds. So on this um, edit it was a little challenging to actually, uh, well just to know I have to get it right on the dot there, 60 seconds, uh, and I had to go back and forth a couple of times and re-trim clips and rearrange uh, the clips so to make sure that I'm not um, that I'm not going over the 60 second mark there. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's nice. It's a really, really good job. Um, question for you. Did you slow it down at all from 30 frames per second? Um, I have also used a 24p uh, timeline just for the same reason as you have mentioned before. Um, I haven't slowed anything down. I haven't done any um, speed ramp transitions or any speed ramp or anything like that. I've saved all that for like the second part, which is gonna come in the next episode um, where we go into the fine tuning and everything of the edit. Um, but yes, I'm planning on doing some, some slowdowns. I'm definitely planning on doing some speed ramping, uh, especially transition wise, um, but I haven't really done that yet. I know where I wanna have them, but I haven't done them yet. That's in the next uh, in the next step of the editing process. For me, I normally always just make sure that I've got the sequence, the story right, because you know, story wins always. Period. And if you've got a good story, you, can, you you're always gonna get a fairly good edit out of it. But if your story sucks, you can edit it whichever way you want. It's just never gonna be a good story. It's gonna be a good edit, but it's not gonna be a good story. Um, so that's always the first thing and everything else can wait for the second step um, in the editing process in my opinion. Mate, I couldn't agree more with you. Story always wins and that's really what I wanted to get out of this video is to show how you can take the clips you've shot whether you know you were doing it purposefully and you've taken our tips about cinematic shooting or in the case of that dive where I was just messing around with my friends and having fun you can still make a pretty decent story out of it that you could share with your friends and get them to, you know, involved with your passion for the underwater world. And that's only going to encourage you. Um, so that's it. What we're going to do now, I think, moving forwards, is we're going to use the same 60 second montage that we've both made. Uh, and we're going to go through sort of the polishing steps that we would normally do, including color grading, adding some transitions. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, sound, sound design, sound, um, all that sort of stuff. Basically taking that rough diamond that we've got now. It's a lump really of coal, let's be honest. To, <laughs> and really making it to the pressure thing that it is. There we that go. It's hidden within it. So that'll be coming up in the next episode of Across the Ocean. Matthias, mate, I, uh, I threw you a bit of a curveball there. Thank you for taking on the challenge. Uh, with such oh, grace. Oh, my pleasure. And, uh, and I, think, uh, I think we've come up with some kind of a result that we can move forward into the, uh, into the next video for sure. And thanks to all of you guys who are watching and supporting this series of videos. Uh, as always, the videos are alternating between our channels, so this one will live on my channel, Divers Ready. And then the next episode where we go into color grading, fine tuning, sound design, will live on the Mateus Levo channel, of course. Both of our channels will be linked in the description of this video below. So if you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe. It really helps us out as your digital content creators to keep making these videos for you. Mate, as always, an absolute pleasure. Great to see you. Hope you're doing well. Pleasure and, was uh, mine. And I'll see you in the next one. Absolutely. Take care and I'll see you next month. Bye, guys.